Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac after birth. Kane. Look, we got our canes on now. This could be an Eve, actually. Starting to get at least like half decent at predicting where these are gonna go. Eve is not a death sentence. T63QDXLL. It's faint praise <laughs> to say that a character is not a death sentence. Does Eve always have red tears to start with? I feel like I'm losing my freaking mind right now. Ruka, you've watched enough of these episodes. Does Eve always start with red tears? Does Eve always start with me making a magnum opus-esque reference to Kanye West's classic track from 2004, All Falls Down, starring the now controversial on a political level Stacey Dash in the music video? Uh, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Uh, Holy Mantle. You don't re-roll Holy Mantle. We don't have anything to re-roll it with regardless, but you certainly don't re-roll Holy Mantle. That is hugely valuable. Um, I'm trying to think if, like, there's any way we can... I guess, actually, we should probably, and by probably I mean maybe, which is definitely the best way to use the word probably is for something that's exactly, you know, not what it means. Um, but I was thinking maybe we should just go into the Whore of Babylon state uh, to take advantage of the fact that we have Holy Mantle, so it's a lot harder for us to die. We might as well, and by might as well, I mean maybe <laughs> should take advantage of the fact that we can... Uh, you know, get the stat bonuses from Horror of Babylon without putting ourselves at a substantial risk of death. We'll see, though. We got a lot of floor left here if we want there to be a lot of floor left here. I mean, this is a situation in which it seems, like, very sensible to have the deal with the devil. I'm also wondering, like, what's up with the Razor Blade? Because it'll hurt us, but of course it will also give us extra damage as well. Now, if we're gonna get into the Whore Babylon state, we don't have to hurt ourselves to do it. Sometimes we can just get hurt and then pretend that we did it on purpose to be constructive. And then it makes us seem like we are a uh, tactical mastermind, which is not the scenario. Ragman is too hard for the first floor, dude. But I don't think he needs a nerf. I think him being too hard is a nice contrast to the enemies that are, at this point, for someone who's played a, a fuck ton of Isaac, actually, like, way too easy. But then keep in mind that... You know, I did think that Dingle was overpowered for a while. You know why? Because he is the fucking Da Vinci Code. You're like, oh my god, how many times does he charge? One, two, or three? The answer, unless he's a champion, always three. But it takes the human mind a little while to clue into that pattern, right? We're talking about a species that, you know, 50% of the English speakers still think for all intents and purposes is for all intensive purposes. That's the level of brain power we're dealing with here. So Dingle charges thrice. Don't uh, question it. Okay, we're in the Horror of Babylon state. Tactical Mastermind confirmed. We're going to do so in, in such a way that didn't leave us too, you know, exposed here. But it was pretty bad uh, damage. Also took forever. Pageant Boy is awesome though. Especially because we're... Well, we got to 10 cents. But um, I was going to say especially because it'll take us to 15 cents. But... Um, the great thing about Pageant Boy is we can buy a Spirit Heart and then feel completely okay with Holy Mantle plus Horror of Babylon. Uh, which is probably what we're gonna do, but I'll maybe take a little bit more time just to see if we can get the 15 cents because the compass is great as well. And in theory, we don't need a Spirit Heart to protect Horror of Babylon because we already have um, Holy Mantle, which is better than a Spirit Heart. And last basically forever, as long as we don't get, you know, another Ragman or something like that. I'm also, I mean, I guess we have two of diamonds, but to pop it on 10 cents, I don't mind doing it. I just think it's kind of like a, you know, worst case scenario sort of situation. Obviously, like a, a ability to get the ability to fly there, like a hanged man card or something would be pretty useful, but unlikely to happen. So let's just take that room as a, a nice bonus. And we get the hero font, so we don't need to buy spirit hearts. Everything's coming together here. I think now you get the compass and maybe a bomb. Yeah. We could get the, the three cent card and hope that it's hanged man, but it's low percentage. And uh, could one of these be a secret room? If one of these could be a secret room, it's more sensible to check that first. It did work out and our golden chest gave us a troll bomb, unfortunately. Ah, but then we got two bombs. Oh God. I think I hear a, a cat throwing up. Our troll bombs, uh, or our, our troll bomb gave us... Our troll bomb didn't give us anything. The secret room gave us uh, an extra bomb there. Okay. Two bombs, a key, 
I think we leave now. We've gotten all the spirit hearts. Let me just make sure that uh, that's just a normal cat vomit and not, you know, this cat urgently needs to be rushed for the veterinarian's office. One moment. Excuse me. Hello. Well, hilariously enough, the cat threw up in the water dish. I guess I'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, and welcome to part two of this episode, where I now rant about the fact that my Ruka freaking threw up in the water dish. I know, like, I don't think anybody's gonna be like, wow, what a dick. You know, he left his Isaac episode to clean cat vomit out of the water dish. But it's like, damn, dude. It was seriously disgusting. Like, it's not just, and I'm, by the way, you know, if you're squeamish, might be a good time to stop listening for a minute or two. But it's just, you know, we've all been there. We all started being on this planet Earth by shitting our pants. Not to mention, uh... Eh, sure, two, one makes you larger times too, I guess. Um, not to mention, we all freaking uh, probably leave this world while shitting our pants, whether we want to or not. But either way, oh, we, do, we don't just have, like, a normal water dish. I don't want to brag, but we've got a premium water dish. Now, we got this water dish that, like pumps water around so there's like a it's not like a fountain necessarily it's not like a waterfall it's just like it's the water gets a little bit of motion because apparently you know cats like drinking from running streams or something because running streams are more likely to be clean water than you know a, a still water lake or something like that, or a pond but anyway you know this is first world problems either way what that means yeah mom's key's pretty good here is that if a cat does something into the water dish, like, say, vomiting into it, the vomit is then going to be pumped through the entirety of the system, dropped off back at the surface, pumped, like, it's it's going to become 100% vomit pretty quickly, so, don't worry, I sterilized everything, I cleaned everything, we're here 45 hours later, and, uh, I'm good to go, and I'm, I'm stoked, because this is, like, a great Isaac run, even though it is a little slow right now, it's going to get faster. It was only slow because we were looking for, like, every available advantage on the floor uh, prior to this one. But, you know, on this one, in, like, two minutes, we took care of absolutely everything. We're going to be in the Whore of Babylon state for hopefully the rest of the game. All I have to do is, like, give up one to two hearts here. And then, you know, if we give up one heart, we're good. If we give up two hearts, we're good. Then we just have to watch our HP for the remainder of the game. If we don't get a deal that actually allows us to trade HP, then... We have to be a little bit more cautious about not picking up half red hearts, but I, I have a feeling that this is going to leave us pretty set here. We might not even want to take that right away. So it is uh, two deals. First one's Gimpy. Second one is Judas' Shadow, which is lovely. And then we did get HP out of it, but that's actually fine. Um, I don't think I'm really going to end my... I mean, we should end our lives so we get the extra Judas bonus, but do we lose out on the Horror Babylon bonus if we get the Judas bonus? I don't know. Uh, one thing's for sure, actually. I am going to re-roll our whole run, but I'm going to wait to do so. We have a lot of things to take care of on this floor first. One of them is, if we're going to re-roll our whole run, we might as well re-roll our whole run to be Dark Judas. Like, and, and still be Dark Judas, I should say. The other one is we have a library, so we should, um... If we're going to use the six room, which will re-roll all pedestals on the floor, we might as well see what the library holds first. That way we can get the uh, advantage, maybe of taking books out of the pool and maybe turning it into an item room later. Something that only rarely ends up happening uh, on Isaac runs. And, you know, we could reroll all these pennies, or at least as many of them as aren't in our way. And, of course, there are zero pennies. My mistake. We'll take that anyway, though. Um, okay, I mean, Taurus is fine. Not good, necessarily, but fine. It doesn't matter, because it's going to get rerolled in about, you know, 1.2 seconds anyway, but... Book of Belial... Anarchist Cookbook, it doesn't matter which one we hold, because it's all getting re-rolled, and let's go for it. I was going to say we should become Dark Judas first. Oh, well. <laughs> My bad. Hey, remember that plan I detailed, like, ten seconds ago? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Okay, we get a speed upgrade. Um, and a lot of spirit hearts. What's up with that? Let's look at our items. We got Bob's Curse, Robo Baby 2.0, uh, Ipecac is the big one, Tech 2, Aura's pretty good, Halo's pretty good. Are we shooting Ipecac? We are shooting Ipecac, just with like a very, very slow rate of fire. Okay. Um, Necronomicon or Book of Shadows? Or Book of Secrets, I should say. Book of Shadows is a no-brainer, but... Sure, we'll take Book of Secrets. Which is only half-charged. 
whatever. I don't know why that is. Probably be, it's a vestige of the fact that we sorta took the item to begin with. Yo, our tech 2 damage is actually out of control. This run is actually fine. Like, it's, I wouldn't say it's as good as the one that we left behind, but it actually may be. As long as we can avoid, uh, you know, taking idiotic damage over the course of the run, then we may actually be completely okay here. I will take the map. I love the, uh, the mapping items. Uh, I'll, I'll even blow up our donation machine to do it, even though it seems like this is a non-urgent sort of situation here. Let's grab that. Um... Don't shoot all the time, because we're going to shoot Ipecac shots into ourselves, and we're good! Ah, uh, okay, and I've, I've fully decompressed from, you know, pet ownership woes. You might think it's gross, but, you know, as much as, uh... This is, by the way, for what I'm about to say, if you're, if you're presently in post-secondary education, live it, love it, okay? I, I regularly extol my thoughts on the virtues of education. I am in, you know, I'm in continuing education myself as well right now. That being said, I think it's fair to say that I don't use my biology degree on a regular basis. But one enduring legacy of the, uh, the biology degree that at least makes me, um, symbolically employable outside of the gaming industry is the fact that now gross shit doesn't bother me. Once you freaking, you know, cut up a, like, dissect a frog fillet its leg muscle and then hook its leg muscle into like a saline bath and then hook electrodes up to it and go like oh this is what it'll look like uh if it's uh got an action potential going on right now and it's not even frogs man like i'm not the i, I don't mind insects but i'm certainly not like the biggest fan i don't get grossed out by them too much but i'm like i'd, I'd rather not like touch an insect or a spider for that matter but um we had to do a lab in my third year of university where we experimented on, like, live locusts. So you would have to pick them up with your hands and, you know, trap them in a garbage can sometimes. And then, like, see how high they could jump inside of the garbage can. And then, I, I forget, it was something to do with, like, you know... At, we'd, we'd take, like, locusts... Dissect them and then do, like, a mass spectrometry. Like, this doesn't matter too much. But do, like, a mass spectrometry and, like, measure the concentration of metabolites. And these would be, like, locusts at rest. Although we also, you know just killed them, so how at rest could they be? Um, and then we'd get some locusts and we'd like really rile them up. We'd be like, hey locusts, you know, fuck you, I hate you, you little bitch. You know, chase them around a little bit, smack them around with a, well, put them in a garbage can and then smack the garbage can with a, with a yardstick and then measure them and we'd be like, oh, surprise, surprise, there's more metabolites there. Anyway, so, you know, after you've done that, you're like, ah, oh, the cat threw up in the water dish, uh, no big deal. I've, I've seen grosser stuff uh, in my time on this earth. Not to mention, you know, if you're ever going to have kids, I'm sure. Let me put it this way. I'd rather clean up a little cat vomit in a water dish than, you know, clean a human baby's shit out of a diaper for like, you know, I was going to say 10 years. I don't think I know how child rearing works. <laughs> how, long, how long do kids take until they get potty trained? It's still like grade five, right? No, it's, you know, I think it's when they're like, Two or something. Anyway, um, we'll open some of this. Either way, um, it's all good. I'm just realizing now I'm like having trouble remembering my university experiments. Might be because I wasn't the most diligent student. I know, do as I say, not as I do. Might be because, holy crap, it's 2016. It's been like eight years since I did that experiment. That's crazy, man. Getting up there. I can tell because, like, I have friends who have had kids and their kids are getting up there. You know, I, I have friends who have, like, you know, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, etc., etc. And I'm like, man, my friend totally looks like my friend's dads and moms looked when I was five. That's how I know that the, the generational torch is passing, man, to, to my generation. And I was just about to make a Limp Biscuit reference, which shows you why, you know, at least I don't deserve to be part of that generation yet. But, um, I'm like, man, these... My friends look like the parents that my friends had when I was young. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You'll get there too, okay? You'll get there too. Noticing a few extra wrinkles in the, in the mirror. I, every time I bring up age, you know, I have a hard time... Uh, explaining that I'm not actually self-conscious about my age, you know? Whether, whether it's fair or otherwise, yeah, I think that, uh... 
we are ahead of schedule here. Whether it's fair or otherwise, you know, I think that uh, as men get older, they don't necessarily have the same societal pressures, you know? You see a 50-year-old man, you're like, oh, he must be, like, distinguished or something like that. Or he's got, like, a huge distended abdomen, and you're like, oh, what went wrong there? Um, you know, is, is that guy okay? He needs to get to the hospital, you know? But, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm just the benefactor of that, you know? I think it's it's tougher for everybody if you if you rely on your beauty. Maybe it's just that I've been bald since I was 19, so instead I don't have to worry as much. It's like, yo, what if I go bald? I've already been there, done that, at the age when most people are, you know, having their balls drop. I'm looking forward to, you know, wisdom and being a little paunchy. And then having people be like, why is he so paunchy? But instead, they're like, oh, it's because he's like 45. Let him go, dude. He's been through some shit. Not to mention, you know, the older you get, the wiser you get. Or at least the, the wiser you should get. Plus, they never take your driver's license away. So, you know, I'm good in that department. Black powder will take ceremonial robes, mom's coin purse. We got the mom transformation for effectively very little benefit. Infested, explosive diarrhea, but also run. How did that work? Balls of steel, very good, and a hermit card for uh, boss rush teleportation purposes. We're totally fine here. We don't have Dark Judas anymore, so let's not uh, accidentally end our own lives here thinking that we do. And we can make this run happen in a big way. I don't know, I think I was a little clumsy in my verbiage for why I'm not worried about aging. I didn't mean to make it, like, a gender-specific thing, but I'm like, I know that when I talk to, you know, my female friends, they say, like, you know, you know, turn 25 this year, it's all downhill from here, and I'm like, it's not, 25 is, is 30, is 17, at least from my perspective, but, I don't know, I definitely do have, you know, friends who are men who are also like, man, I can't, like, binge drink three nights a week and eat a whole large pizza and still, like, have abs in the morning. I'm like, yeah, it's... Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, it's not a good thing. It'd be dope if we could just invent, like, a pharmaceutical way to take that away. But, you know, in our present society, it's probably a good thing that we have to learn some discipline and stuff like that. Uh, do we have evil upgrades? Like, ceremonial robes is an evil upgrade, right? Maybe we should just take Black Feather here and, and get a small damage up out of it. Ooh, balls of steel, boys. All right. Well, we might as well play this a couple more times. All I'm getting at is, like, there may be a point where I am anxious about my age. It might seem like I am anxious about it already because I talk about it all the time, but it's actually not the case. That age for me is, is definitely not 30. Like, I'm when I turn 30, which is, you know, on the horizon, I think I'm going to be, like, totally fine. No worries. 35, 40, we might be starting to get a little anxious for me personally, but certainly, like, I mean, I had a friend. He might even be watching this. What's up, Mike? It's not Michael A.L. Fox. It's a different guy. But, um, you know, I remember he he turned 20 like a month before me in college. And he was like, it's all over now. I'm 20 years old. You understand? It's ridiculous. Like, looking back, I, I hope that he knows it was ridiculous at the time as well. But, you know, every everybody's got that age where it gets triggered. Like, my mom was like, you know, for me, it was like 25. Once I got over 25, I was like, well, I'm I'm an adult now. You know, 25 is 40, is 50, etc., etc. I guess my my bound for that is just slightly different, but it'll it'll probably happen. You know, eventually you got to come to terms with the fact that um, hey, you're gonna get older, man. And we hope that we all age like you know Helen Mirren or you know George Clooney or something like that. But we probably won't. I mean, like, you could, everybody thinks that they will, but, you know, the writing will be on the wall eventually. Some of you will, and that's amazing, but, you know, most of us are going to age like, uh, we're going to age like milk instead of like wine, so, you know, work on the old noggin and the personality up there, so, you know, you still, uh, you still got something to be proud of when your six-pack goes away. And it will, unless Ray Kurzweil gets his way. Oh, that was terrible dodging. Uh, we do get a deal with the devil. I mean, this is pretty much ideal. We take the Polaroid, go in here. Uh, we might as well take both because we have Black Feather. I completely fucked up the way we were supposed to do that, so we're not going to take um, Contract from below. That's totally my bad. Oh, and the Wafer. Wafer's lovely. Um, extremely good, actually. We'll take our Spirit Heart. Take the Empress, uh, why not take the Nun Savage just in case as well. And we should blow this up and get a key. 
I might have to do it a couple of times here. All right, grab that, grab that. This run is still fine. Oh my god, there's mom's knife as well. But it, it's tough to overstate like how uh, how much easier this would have been if I had just gotten contract from below for free, and then our you know we wouldn't have had to pay three spirit arts for any deal with the devils. This is just it, it was a misplay because I stepped on the spikes and then I like moved in the wrong direction. But life goes on, especially like with mom's knife here. Should be completely fine. Hopefully we can pick up a dope trinket as well. The wafer is huge. I mean, Mom's Pearl might be fine, but let's be honest. We're probably not, you know, sweating that 0.3 uh, damage up from Black Feather that much right now. So maybe we should just try to get, like, one extra Spirit Heart occasionally or something. I suppose, like, a loss is still in the theoretical cards for us here. Just because of the fact that our, our HP is low now, but we should be able to work through it here. Just don't forget, we don't have a respawn. Might seem like we have a respawn. We do not have a respawn. What we do have is a, an extremely good chance to... Uh, oh my god. Finish this run very quickly. Do we have the virus? Where's the poison? Oh, it's, it's coming from Ipecac plus Mom's Knife. Right. Weird. I'm used to most enemies dying instantly thanks to Ipecac. But now that we have Mom's Knife, it's, it's slightly askew. Seven cents. Uh, I would like a deal with the devil chance, but I'd also just like an HP upgrade if you'd be so kind as to hook me up there. You did not, but you gave me a key, which I am eternally grateful for. Pinky Eye, I think at this point, is perhaps completely cannibalized by our other tier effects, so. We should... Oh, man, that was close. We should really be using Tech 2. Like... Mom's Knife is obviously amazing, and Tech 2 has a bad stigma attached to it because of how much damage um, reduction it has. However, we've got a fast rate of fire, and it also has infinite range. So if we're taking too much damage from getting, like, right up into an enemy's face, we really should just back it up. We also, like, th this guy's fucked as soon as this, like, tail section shows up. He's a champion, so he's doing a little bit better than he otherwise would be, um, apart from that. Oh, come on. Just outside of the black feather area. Still got it. Left hand with doubled effectiveness. I don't think it matters. I know I'm supposed to be Mr. Zany, but I already rerolled the whole fucking run. What more do you want from me? I don't think I can go that low on HP even with the wafer. If I still had a Holy Mantle, I'd be all over it. I do not still have Holy Mantle, though. So at this point, I think we just need to poison like all these guys and we're probably safe. Okay. Well, what's the ticket on this floor? Uh, we don't need... Look at how are these enemies getting through the deal with the devil, and by deal with the devil, I mean Mom's Knife setup right now. Like, did Tech 2 actually lower our damage to the point where Mom's Knife is not good, but somehow Tech 2 remains viable? Like, I'm very confused about how those two things can coexist. We're very lucky we got the wafer, honestly, because otherwise we would... Well, I mean, it's not fair to say we'd be dead, because hopefully, you know, the... The defense that I'll muster is that I would play a little differently if we didn't have as much leeway that was given to us by the wafer. However, it is fair to say we'd, we'd probably be in a lot scarier of a position, and the position is already, like, mildly anxiety-inducing. Now that I've gone, like, another ten seconds, I'm like, actually, this is the easiest run of all time. This is a weird run. It's all scattered and edited together and cat threw up in the freaking... This is a small floor. Cat threw up in the freaking water dish. Of all the places for the cat to throw up. Again, I'm not trying to gross you out. Allow me to say, first off, you can live your life however you want. If talking about, not even showing a picture of, if talking about the concept of cat vomit grosses you out, you gotta, you know, get your shit together, face the real world, okay? There's a, you know, there's a teenager this year who's playing Pokemon Go, found a dead body. That's the kind of shit that can shake you up, right? Or are you, is this the internet era now, where, um... If you saw a dead body, you'd be like, yeah, whatever, I've seen movies. Dead body, doesn't bother me, you fucking puss. Cat vomit, though, they never show that in Harry Potter. They don't, I don't know, I've never seen the Harry Potter movies. They might not show dead bodies in those either. It is about a serial killer, though, am I right? It's a true crime, David Fincher, um, other vague film-related references. Werner Herzog. Louis Threw. Anyway, uh... Black Powder's doing good work. All the speed upgrades 
Like, I think black powder might be one of the items in the game that actually has the highest amount of variance. If you've got amazing speed, I think black powder could be like a 9 out of 10, at least like an 8 out of 10 quality item. Uh, if you've got shit speed, it's actually useless. It's not a zero, because, you know, there are items that uh, make your run even worse than it already is, but it, it it's effectively like a two. It doesn't affect your run at all. Please get, like, closer to the center of the screen so that I can actually hit you with black powder. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Now that, we never should have done that, but I'm glad we did. Because it was ridiculous. Uh, and I think our HP is fine. We've taken like one hit, but we might have gotten a Spirit Heart on this floor regardless. Not really rushing. We just have, you know, Mom's Knife and a fuck ton of damage. Lucky to have four keys as well, or five keys in this case. We got $3 bill. Probably not that useful. Piggy Bank, not useful at all. Little chubby. Um, I'm not going to say it's not useful, but... Uh, it, it's not going to be very meaningful considering the whole Death's Touch, Ipecac, Mom's Knife thing. Yeah, I'm just realizing that, like, all complaining is going to fall on deaf ears as a result of the fact that uh, we have, like, three super high damage ups. Some of the best in the game that, in, in some cases, can pretty much guarantee you the win uh, by themselves. So, don't take that as the, the ramblings of a man who is displeased with his lot in life from an Isaac context. Instead, take that as the idle complaining of a man who just cleaned, you know, wet vomit chunks out of a mechanical device. And you can't just give that a once-over, dude. I love these cats like they're my actual children. You gotta sterilize it, you know, you're using water that sears the fucking skin off your hands and dish soap, but not dish soap that smells like uh, citrus because cats don't like citrus, so instead, you know, you get out the... The old kiwi one. Is kiwi a citrus fruit? It is acidic, but it, it's not kiwi soap anyway. I don't know what kind it is. It's like original flavor. And by flavor, I mean scent. This is freaking me out, dude. I don't want to make the obvious joke <laughs> about erectile dysfunction, so we'll just move on. Okay, there we go. Whoa, whoa. All I'll say is if you got a bend like that in your tally whacker, you should stop playing with it or at least switch hands when you get up to the plate. Alright, redeemed. Here we go. Let's win the run. It doesn't matter. Just jam yourself in there. At this point, you know, good play is just ac academic. Let's finish this fucking run so I can go, you know, live my life and decompress a little bit. Fantastic. Weird run. Fast run. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did... Click the like button, helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. New Isaac episodes every single day, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.